Hello and welcome to this tutorial about how I have multiple loopback plugins set up in Apple's main stage. I had quite a few comments on my website and on my YouTube page about the details of the setup, so I thought it might be easiest to make a couple videos explaining the different parts of the process. In this video, I'm just going to go over how to get multiple loopback plugins running at one time and how you can have them do different song sections and bring them in and out together. I'm by no means like a main stage expert. I picked up most of this just as I went, so if you have any questions or maybe an idea for an improvement, please leave it in the comments. And let's just get started. So this is a pretty basic setup with no controls and just one uh, MIDI controller controlling a grand piano sound for now. So let's get started. One of the important things to my setup is the difference between the concert level, the song level, and the patch level. Uh, knowing where to create your tracks and sounds and the busing between them is important to getting it all to work very seamlessly and having multiple sounds uh, work with the same set of loopers. So let's get started up at the concert level. We will create an audio track to hold the first looper, make sure it is stereo, and we'll take its input from bus 1, it could be any bus, and its output to bus 1 and 2, or your main uh, output that your speakers are connected to. Let's go ahead and create that track. It'll warn you that you are creating it at the concert level. Go ahead and create it. So here on track 1, to get a loop plugin working, it's kind of hidden in the menus. Click here to add a plugin, go all the way down to main stage, go over to delay, and then to loopback. So this brings up a basic loopback plugin. Most of the settings out of the box will work for us. The main thing we want to change is this group right here. This lets you have multiple loops start and stop together. So the double dashes indicate no group. They will all start and stop independently. We'll set this one to group A. Anything group A will start when this one starts and stop when this one stops. And all the other groups will stop when this one starts. So for example, you can have song sections A, B, and C for a verse, chorus, bridge setup. So we'll set that to A. Uh, one nice trick is if you come up here to view, you can click controls instead of the editor and get a detailed list of a lot more controls. The one thing we definitely want to change is this monitor. You want to set it to off. The way I have it set up, I have my uh, instruments all go bust to the loopback plugin and I don't want to monitor through them or it would multiply the audio. If I had three loopback plugins monitoring all at once, your audio would be three times as loud. So go ahead and turn that off. You can come back to the editor view and you can also turn a lot of those settings from this little settings icon right here in the main loopback plugin. You can set your monitoring, you can set things to do when you select a patch or on clock start. I leave both those to do nothing. A lot of these are preference things and you can change them as you go. Another important thing to note is have the length set to the double dashes or no length. That way it will start recording when you hit record and then the length will be as long as it plays until you stop recording. If you have a set length it will go ahead and lock you into a four bar loop or whatever you specify. I like to have it done on the fly for each loop. So now that that is set, we can test it out by coming here to our song and then our piano patch. We can see I have already bust it to bus 1 at 0 dB, so it's getting all the signal it's tracking here. Just make sure that bus matches the bus that is on your loop loopback plugin, so your loopback will be getting signal. Now we can go ahead and do a test. You can start main stage. Make sure the metronome sound is on so you have something to key into. And press record. It 
So that will immediately start looping when you stop recording. The fact that this light is still on indicates it is still live, so you can overdub onto it. And then you can stop your overall uh, main stage clock. And in case you missed what I did there, to start recording, I pressed spacebar or the play button to start the overall clock. And then this is quantized to the start and stop of that clock. So if I press play, it will start on the next downbeat. And same with record. You press it right before the beat you want to come in, and then it lets you come in right on the downbeat. You can go ahead and clear that loop by selecting this settings icon again and say clear tape loop. Now that we have one loop working, we want to get, uh, let's say, three loops working. So come back up to the concert level, select this, hit Command C, and paste it. It'll warn you that you are again creating a strip at the concert level. So now I've doubled it and I'll Command V to paste it again. So now I have three loopback plugins, all fed from bus one, all going to output one and two. The main thing I want to change is on the second, I want to make it group B. So when I start recording and playing on this one, group A and all others will stop. And I want my third plugin to be set to no group. That way this will play over everything else. So for a quick example of that, I will come back down to the Steinway grand piano sound. You can scroll over from the channels and see that we have the three loopback plugins all ready to record. And these will not show any signal because we're not monitoring through them. So you only get signal through these channels when you are actually playing back what the loopback has recorded. So you can start by pressing spacebar and record your first loop. So now that loop is recording, we can come over to group B. As soon as I press record here, it will stop the other loop. So you can see B is recording and playing while A is stopped. And you can come back to A. And now A is playing and B is stopped. The exciting part is when you get into this loop with no group, I can record something that will go over both of the loops A and B, like a bass line. So now you can see I have group A and the no group loop playing. So if I start B, B is now playing over the bass line. I can start and stop the no group loop independently. So I hope now you can see a pretty straightforward way to set up multiple loopers. One of my favorite ways to do this is three loops, an A, B, and a C for a verse, chorus, bridge, and then three no group loops for things like pads and drums and shakers that will come in over top of the others. It's a pretty uh, straightforward setup that lets you do a lot with it. Um, if you have any questions, again, please comment below. Future videos will talk about how to get your controllers set up and mapped so you don't have to constantly be opening and shutting these plugins. And we will also talk about audio routing. So instead of just one bus, we can have multiple buses for different instruments, vocals, different effects, and how to have songs set up so that your songs uh, 
you can do a whole performance with one set of loopers and have your sounds all set up, your tempos ready to go, and just step through your songs. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.